Welcome to the Strategic Management Accounting course, where we teach the value-adding steps and processes necessary to execute strategy. Whether you are just starting up or looking to grow your business, then this course is for you. With your host, Dr. Neil O'Connor. I'm going to take you through the B. I call it the BSC flyer. Do you know what this is? This is the BSC flyer. You know the, you know the flyer you get into and you go around. But you know the great thing about this flyer. This flyer is a value creation flyer, unlike the Singapore flyer, which is technically bankrupt. Okay, all right. This one creates value. It doesn't suck up expenses. Okay. This creates value for the organization. And we are to talk about aspects of value. Why? Because you know the structure of the balance scorecard, which was SMS, uh, strategic objectives, measures, and what was the other one? S -s -s System thinking, right? You know that. And look, if you really don't appreciate that yet, I really encourage you, get into that game again. Have a look at it again. Uh, come and see me for a CD if you need help with that. Okay. All right. But today we're going to spend more time on G-O-A-L. What did you learn in the game that can be relevant to G-O-A-N-L? Okay, so we're going to look at that today. And so here's the question I have for you. What activity helps us? Let's go through the G-O-A-L now. What's the first one? G stands for? Goal congruence, right? You know, goal, look, goal congruence, okay? It's in front of you here. So let's uh, work this through here. So, which activity helps, helped? Which activity did I take you through? You have experienced, and really, it helped you to learn goal congruence. Which activity was that? Yeah, what? <laughs> a hint. We did it a couple of weeks ago. Just think of all the activities you did uh, over the last few weeks and probably you, they're working it out, okay. Did anyone remember what we did a few weeks ago? <coughs> um, I, got, I put you into groups and I said one group I want you to focus on this strategy, your group I want you to focus on this strategy, this group I want you to focus on this, what was that? Coffee shop, exactly. Someone's on the ball here. Yes, that was goal congruence. And what? So what is it about that activity that I made the connection with goal congruence? I, you know, I, you don't don't accept for me a professor to say, oh, that's goal congruence. Okay, go away. It's head knowledge. Oh, professor said so. It is. No. What aspect makes you leads you to believe that relates to goal congruence? What aspect of that, you, you did an activity, what aspect of that activity do you think leads to this notion that, oh, if we do this activity in the organisation, that will help achieve one of the benefits of the balance scorecard. Which one? Oh, goal congruence. So what was it about that activity that leads to goal congruence? Everyone is discussing and they come up with a solution. Right, so therefore... You share the same goal? Yeah. Okay, that's it. You're on the process. So, so you actually, it was the process, wasn't it? It wasn't the outcome that mattered, right? All right, so you're right on there, Jim. Right? It's the process, the fact that as a group you come together to come to a shared understanding of what do we mean. So even if, even if the boss says, oh, we're going to make the best copy in the world, well, then you might have 30 people working for you, but 30 different ways of... 30 different ideas of what each thinks the best coffee is or 30 different ideas of what we think customer service to be. So it's not about just getting a common definition, it's about getting people to agree on some common understanding of what, how we need to be seen to the customer. You with me? So that's sort of goal, what we mean by goal congruence. All right, so re partially related to that is this notion of this role, role, Clarity. So anyone in that strategy map of that coffee chain know how their role contributes to the overall strategy. So when I have role clarity, then don't you think I'm going to work harder? You know, if, assuming that I love to work for this place, 
role clarity versus role ambiguity, which, under which scenario would I work better? When I'm more clear on my role, right? When I'm more clear about how I should talk to customers, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. You, you have that clarity, right? You will want clarity for the exam. You know the difference, you know, ambiguity and clarity, all right? It's the same thing. Goal, that helps contribute to goal congruence. Okay, so there's two things there about goal congruence. One is the, um, one we can say is the, the fact that we use development, development, all right? So that means we have group, we get the notion of group think in the development. So we get group agreement, okay? But the other one is in terms of we get role clarity, all right? With that role clarity, everyone in the organisation know what, knows what their role is. So they know what they should do, what they shouldn't do, things like that. Okay, so I guess goal congruence is kind of both of these, no, both of these things to happen. Role clarity, that's a really big thing. Okay, let's move on. What is the difference between an on-time decision making and accuracy? This is what we want to look at in reviewing the simulation game. And finally, what measures and decisions can you think of that are examples of on-time decision making and accuracy? What you need to do over the next 10 minutes, as I go through the next 10 minutes, is you need to be able to answer those two questions with clarity, okay? You need to be able to have clear answers to those two questions. Okay, so let's, let's begin. Are, are you clear on what you need to know over the next 10 minutes, okay? So if you don't have clarity, you need to ask questions or really work out which area you need uh, more clarification on, okay? Two questions. One and two, okay? So there's our, there's our famous flyer. What we're looking at now is on-time decision-making, accurate decision-making. Notice out of, what have we got? We got our, fly, I love the fly, I love drawing it, because it's very easy to draw seven circles, all right? It's just sort of natural, all right? I know Chinese like eight, but maybe next year I'll turn it into eight, all right? But for now we've got seven, all right? S. M, S, you know that very well. You know this very well. We're going to cover measurement in the second half today in more detail, and I'm going to emphasize this notion of knowledge transfer. How do you, that's different from head knowledge, okay? I'm going to teach you how to actually transfer your learning to any type of organization. Wow. Rather than just head knowledge, okay? That's a difference where I'll emphasize. I've done this in t my 10 years of training, so I'll do this with you. Hopefully we'll, we make some success today. CG, um, there's our goal congruence. We've basically done that. The game really didn't emphasize goal congruence. You with me here? The game emphasized on-time decision-making and accuracy. It emphasized these two. The game did not ac emphasize too much on the learning. Well, a little bit. Do you think there was some learning going on? Which area do you think it was occurring, if it was going on? That's an easy one, so let's knock that out now. Learning is something that is the glue that glues multiple times of going through the game together. So learning, the absence of learning is that when you play the game again, you have zero knowledge. But that's impossible, you just played it, right? So when you play it a second time, you know you know how to take some shortcuts, right? Because you've already gone through, you've done a trial and error already. Then the third time, then fourth time, that's what we mean by learning. You with me? Businesses don't have that luxury. You with me here? Businesses don't have the luxury of just throwing a million dollars every time there's a, the game played, right? I don't think you would have time. All right, not time, it's not the resources to do this. But learning does occur over time and hopefully the bounce scorecard can contribute to that because we can make the system clearer over time or we can make the measures better over time and then that can help uh, stabilize our learning. Learning of what? What do, we, what do we want to learn anyway? Or what is it that we want to learn? Do we want to learn the strategy, the measurement, or the system? Which area do you think we want to, we businesses benefit most from in the learning? You you got thirty three percent chance. Hands up for strategy. Hands up for measurement. Hands up for systems thinking. Okay, yeah. 
Definitely. Look, this over time you get to know this more. Because this is kind of external. This is driven by what? Yeah, the customer drives this a lot, right? You know that the customer drives this. You know that. Why? Because I showed you at the end of last lesson that strategy is all about, well, do I choose this type of customer segment to go in or do I go into this customer segment, right? Keep it very simple here, right? You know, this might be a high margin and this might be a low margin, you know, costly. You with me here? You choose one, you choose the other, suddenly you've got a totally different system. Okay. Now, it may not be a manufacturing system that's different, but when it comes to the sales end and after sales service, the customer expectation is going to be different. You see, the whole system is why they buy from you is totally different. So you wouldn't plow a lot of money into serving customers at the low end. Are you with me? But it, suddenly you go into a market where customers are paying high premium, then you might have to do more on your after sales service. You, you hear me here, right? So strategy and system sync are connected, but it's kind of like strategy is kind of the choice that owners make, the organization. They choose, we want to go into this market. We don't want to go into that market. You, you make that choice, all right? Then the sort of system is sort of already there. Like you go into that market, then it's got its own system about what attracts customers, what is the value creation. Uh, secret source. Write that down. That's the big question. You know, what is the value creation? Okay, uh, secret source. And what you're going to learn at the end of today, let's go, let's fast forward 90 minutes. What you're going to learn at the end of today is that. We are all about value creation. A company cannot create value if it doesn't make decisions. And you really, the only measures that have value are the ones that help, that help you make better decisions. Yes. That's in, very interesting. So, how how you create value is really in the eyes of the customer. So, and what is the customer? It's, it's systems thinking. Exactly. Yes. Ah, you've got it right there. So, this is kind of like system one, and this is kind of like system two. Are you with me? So, are, are you going to compete in one system versus another system? Are you with me? Of course, there may be. Partial systems that overlap, for example, procurement or assembly or manufacturing, you, you, you know, you're making the same thing. So the system, the way the quality control system, the logistics is the same, but the person you're selling to is different. So their expectations are different. Their lead time may be different. The delivery expectations are different. After sales service is different. All that system is different. You with me? So some systems may overlap. Okay. All right. Here's the big thing, and this is what leads on to measurement because so far, like, measurement's kind of like the orphan. You know, strategy is so important. System's so important. What about measurement? What about me? Okay. All right. You just say, what about me? Remember, remember the famous song. What about me? All right. So. <laughs> What about measurement? It's sort of on its own. Where does that come in? Well, it does come in because in order to have value creation, you need to make decisions. The only decisions, the only measures worth making are the ones that affect decisions. Ah, now let's go back to here. That is where accuracy and on time, on time what? On time decision making. Look. Accurate decision making. See that? See the on time and accurate. See, we've already done goal congruence. All right? Let's check off that. Cross that off. You're not worried about that now. You've done that. All right? So now it's accuracy on on time, and they're the decisions here. So the only measures that we should be focusing on are those that help us make better on time decisions or accurate decisions or in another way we could actually draw it this way we can have we can have on time here 
and we only come back to this in more detail. Or we can have, um, we can call this mag magnitude, okay? It's a magnitude and this is a non-time dimension. But to keep it simple, let's just call it accuracy. Are you with me here? Okay? There's magnitude and there's accuracy. Okay? On time, and then it's possible to think, oh, isn't on time accuracy and magnitude, aren't they both accuracy? You could, it's possible you could say they're both accuracy, but think about it. Think about it. You only care about a decision, the magnitude of decision, once you've decided to make the decision. You with me? If you're not making a decision, then the magnitude doesn't matter. Are you with me here? If I'm going to hire people, remember in the game, I can hire customer service people, right? All right? I can hire five, I can hire six, seven. How many do I hire? Is that a magnitude or, or a timing decision? What do you think? It's magnitude, yes. Now, if I, just hire, if I de decide not to hire anyone, which kind of, you say, is that it's timing, right? You decided to delay a decision, you see? So that's not being inaccurate. It just, you've decided to delay a decision. Are you with me on here? Okay, so um, on time is kind of when, when you make a decision, all right? And accuracy is also, in some ways, about how much. Are you with me here? Okay, now you can go back to the game and let me ask you, <coughs> you can do it in groups, in pairs of two. I want you to come up with, come up with a, a measure that you witnessed in the game and a decision you made that is representative of the measure given feedback so you make a accurate decision, that is, in terms of magnitude, all right? I want you to come up with a second example of a measure that gave you feedback that helped you make a better on-time decision. I want you to give me two examples. I'll give you three minutes in.